My presentation is quite uh, entertaining. It's not so heavy science, but uh, the project we have been working in Estonian Academy of Arts. I'm leading little research group there, it, and it's uh, about uh, textile waste mainly. And we have been focusing uh, to the upcycling method. And what's, uh, uh, what's new in that project is that uh, really like first time uh, in fashion industry we have uh, started project together uh, with really huge, really big uh, producer in Bangladesh. It's um, Peximco and they are really the biggest uh, producer in Bangladesh. And our little team, we have like uh, me as a fashion designer and upcycling designer, then we have environmental scientists with us and technical designer also, who also does uh, all the uh, calculation related to textiles. So industrial upcycling, it's basically the main thing what we have um, now been testing in Bangladesh is that we first we um, mapped all the production there. The Peximco has a huge industrial park and they uh, really have everything from the beginning till the end. So they, they make the yarn, fabric, uh, everything. So we mapped all the production and then started to analyze where the waste actually comes and what kind of waste we can find there. So they opened really like all the doors and it has been extremely interesting now to understand. And the huge, for me, very big surprise was that they actually they even didn't know what kind of waste they have and how much actually they are reducing the, the waste there. So roughly we can um, say that with upcycling, the basically bringing the waste back to the production through design in the same factory, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can reduce quite a lot of um, uh, water and electricity and also CO2 emissions. And um, that's the material we are working with. Cutting leftovers coming from the production, uh, from, the, uh, from, from the table when they are cutting out uh, the original products, so then Rollins, because they, there is always huge overproduction also related to the fabric, and then uh, overproduction. They always, because of the cycle of the fashion is so fast, they always produce three to five percent more products. So they are like uh, uh, good quality ready-made products, but everything goes to the trash. Because Bangladesh, of course, is totally different topic, but uh, as many places in Asia, Bangladesh doesn't have uh, like proper waste management system, so everything just goes to the somewhere. And then we started to test uh, different uh, ways how we can bring the waste back to the production. I just put here a few like examples. Like if they had um, this kind of uh, top for Sara in the work, uh, they produced like uh, 30,000 items and the mar marker efficiency is um, basically when uh, the product goes to the product line, they put, they, they, they put the pattern on the, on the marker and the one way to work with, we have been uh, working with the <coughs> leftovers in the marker, yeah. So, and that means that uh, the upcycled uh, product has to be made from quite small pieces, you can see from here. But but it's, um, the result is really, really good. And you can see actually, uh, the, uh, even we actually uh, reduced uh, the marker efficiency, like uh, not so much, but if you, if you compare the virgin product and the upcycled product, uh, then uh, the numbers are quite, uh, quite, quite interesting. Then it's possible to get these slides. Email. Yes. That we don't yes. Write yeah, yeah, sure. I can uh, send the p PDF and yes. mm -hmm. yeah, of course. Then uh, that's the one um, dress also we have made um, <coughs> only using uh, uh, material from the marker. So it's uh, there is always like two things. In one hand, you can use using this kind of small pieces. You can uh, use lot of material from the uh, from the marker, but in the other time there is lot of work. You have to show the fabric first, and then you can cut out the new product. But still, it's uh, worth to do it. Then, uh, uh, 
from from the same series. It's uh, it was one Meishi's men, men shirt. You can see how many items they made, what was the efficiency, and uh, and we tested the product like this. And here is the numbers how much we <coughs> we reduced. So 52% of waste uh, reduction is possible. It's they are actually all the numbers. We have been doing it together with this, um, with the Environmental Institute here. So we have been using the Simapro to make the life cycle analysis for the every item. I, I just uh, took out like three numbers here, but basically we have like uh, we have been doing um, all environmental analysis for every product we have made. So and all the numbers we have in our data. This is uh, as, yeah to bad light, you can't see the dress, but it's uh, here we have been using uh, the uh, marker and the cutting leftovers. It means that this part is made from the one uh, one piece and this is like like a patchwork. <coughs> it's still dark. It's still a bit dark, yeah. yeah. But basically the same thing, but we have been... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> the point is to, to mix... Uh, to mix different ways, uh, the, the nicest way, of course, how to do it is actually to, uh, to use only the marker because then you can cut out the, the upcycled product in the same time with the original product and it uh, directly from, from, from the table it can go to the sewing. If we are doing um, like this, that we are um, mixing uh, uh, cutting leftovers and the marker, then there is one more step needed between to put this materials together, but it's still, uh, it's still worth. Uh, so it's uh, one, uh, again, one uh, ISO shirt, very good quality linen. And, uh, and they had also quite, uh, quite big uh, waste, so we made out this kind of blouse for the ladies, and the waste reduction is 75% like this. Then uh, uh, the, um, we actually finished uh, our latest collection and we are going like tomorrow to Berlin to, to show all the concept. So it's like the, the latest um, calculation we just finished a few weeks ago in Bangladesh and, uh, and tested different methods there. So now we have all the data, data gathered and um, the case studies are like finished. This is the same kind of uh, that uh, roll lens and, and cutting. Ah, this is the third one already, sorry. It's like uh, everything already what uh, comes not from the marker but from the waste yard. Uh, then we have like a uh, few items you can see. They are like um, combined that we can uh, very small, this, uh, this piece here is done from the very, very small pieces. So you can actually go into every marker you, you have there. And then uh, a little bit bigger, bigger parts that you can uh, use roll lens and cutting leftovers also. So and uh, this kind of dress will reduce 67% of water and and 86% of energy saved. Oops. Here, uh, it's the same, you can, <laughs> yeah, and it's still talk, but there is 10 in trousers, exactly the same, but they are like cut it like a little bit like this, but uh, basically you can even uh, use the same patterns what they have there in the production and just to make upcycled version out of it. And uh, this jersey is also, Jersey is very good to work with because uh, there is often very difficult patterns and there is the, the pattern efficiency is really, really bad. So it's quite, use, quite uh, easy to put uh, items where you have like pieces, like quite big pieces you can actually add to the marker. Uh, this is uh, one more sample from the same kind of upcycled dress. And yeah, we have been gathering all the data and everything uh, right now to my personal uh, web page. And in the same time, doing the upcycling uh, 
project in Bangladesh, we have started um, uh, together with MA students. We created a platform called Trash to Trend. It was part of my my doctoral thesis also. It's um, the, there is one big part of uh, it uh, is uh, waste mapping. So we have we started years ago mapping uh, industrial waste here in Estonia. Now we have been going to Finland and to Latvia and Lithuania and going to the Scandinavia also and it's slowly starting in Asia also which is really complicated but we already started something there and uh, the main idea would would uh, try to find companies who would, who could use the, actually the industrial waste it's like um, for, to put them together and also to put uh, small here in Europe we have like lots of uh, in Estonia especially we have a lot of small producers still to put them together with smaller dis independent designers that they can use the material. Because right now in Estonia, all the textile waste goes to the landfill, which is the, the worst thing what can happen with uh, this kind of virgin material. Uh, so there is, in the Baltic uh, region, like uh, it's every, everywhere like this. So we don't have a recycling system working so well. And, um, and even if we take like, um, Denmark, where like all the textile waste, what they have, of course they have quite good sorting systems, but still uh, the material goes to the burning. It's always upcycling is a little bit, not little bit. It's like quite uh, yeah, much better solution for the for the textiles. But the just uh, last thing, um, the, maybe the most um, challenging. Uh, problem related to uh, textile waste in Europe is post, uh, actually, yeah, post-consumer waste, what to do with that. It's very complicated type of waste. The, they have been trying to, or academics have been trying to find a solution how to, um, how to make 100% recycled yarn, but yeah. So that's the main kind of focus right now here in Europe. But um, if you see from the environmental side uh, in Asia, then definitely the textile industry is the biggest pollu polluter there, so there is so many problems related to textile industry. And I think the biggest problem actually is not the waste, the biggest problem, what I have now understood, just spending so much time in Asia is uh, toxins, what we are using in textile industry. But it's quite in the beginning, the research in the, that area, how we could uh, actually change uh, all these toxins. So. Basically, very shortly, thank you.